at the request of our readers from the Azores Islands, we will teach you how to make potassium hydroxide soap for garden and orchard pests, and also for homemade laundry detergent. We'll see how to make this soap step by step, from production, to dilution, and ways of use. It is important to know that this is a soap without super fat, so it is not suitable for the skin. To make this soap, the necessary materials are 1 stainless steel pot 1 plastic or glass container for measuring the water 1 plastic or glass container for measuring the potassium hydroxide 1 stainless steel spoon for dissolving the hydroxide in the water 1 spatula for mixing the potash solution with the oils 1 spoon to help with pH testing 1 Pyrex and 1 hand blender all these materials must be reserved exclusively for soap making and none can be aluminum due to potential reactions with potassium hydroxide. Other necessary materials are one digital kitchen scale, one pot mat, two bowls for measuring the oils, two tablespoons for handling solid coconut oil, one kitchen spatula for scrapping the bowls with the oils, one digital kitchen thermometer, one large spoon to help transfer the soap to a container, pH strips, one measuring container for water, one water kettle, very useful for dilution, one container with a lid to store the soap batter, one funnel, and one container to store the liquid soap at the end. As always, safety equipment is more than mandatory, and the necessary items are safety goggles, face mask, rubber gloves, a long sleeve lab coat and closed shoes. All skin should be well protected. Check out all the safety warnings for soap making in this suggested post. So let's see how to make this soap. First of all, it is important to know that the result is never a liquid soap, but rather a thick batter that only becomes gel-like or even liquid after dilution, depending on the dilution ratio. This soap is made by the hot process, meaning the soap will be cooked and won't need curing after it's made. If you've never made soap before, watch our videos on how to make solid soap first. Links are provided below in the video description. Before we begin the step-by-step -step instructions, we strongly recommend keeping a logbook every time you make your own soap, so you can jot down and later recall all the important details of each production batch. So let's start by weighing the empty stainless steel pan. Ours weighs 374 grams. Knowing the weight of the pan will be crucial at the end of the wool process. Next, we will weigh the oils and we recommend weighing them separately in case of errors that need rectifying. Weigh 141 grams of cold pressed extra virgin coconut oil. and 94 grams of extra virgin olive oil. Olive oil can be plain or macerated with pest repellent plants such as peppermint, rosemary or thyme. Learn more about macerations in our post How to make a maceration and more about plants and their uses in our book The 5 C's of Aromatic and Medicinal Plants. Weigh 180 grams of distilled water from here, put on all safety gear before handling the potassium hydroxide and weigh 60 grams of potassium hydroxide with 90% purity. We recommend reading our post for a detailed explanation about the reasons for each of these ingredients and for many other valuable insights into making this soap. Now let's add the oils to the pan using a kitchen spatula to remove all the oils from the bowls so there is no waste or significant differences in the quantity. Turn on the stove to low heat. It doesn't need to be very hot, just enough until the coconut oil melts completely. While the fats are heating, pour the hydroxide over the water, never the other way around, and stir with a stainless steel spoon. Once dissolved, add the water solution to the fats in the pan. From here, it's crucial to constantly control the temperature while stirring the solution with a spatula exclusive for soap making. 
the temperature of the solution should not exceed 70 degrees Celsius. For those who have a crock pot, this won't be a problem. But for those who don't, just like us, it's necessary to put the pan on and off the heat to ensure it doesn't exceed 70 degrees. After stirring the solution a bit with the spatula, use the hand blender. Mix the solution for a few minutes, always monitoring the temperature in a combination of stirring and a little heat from the stove. When the batter becomes too thick for the blender, use the spatula again. For us, it took 8 minutes to reach this point. When the batter is thick and begins to release a little steam, turn off the stove and continue cooking the batter just with the residual heat of the pan. As soon as the batter reaches a consistency similar to mashed potatoes, but much thicker, it might be ready. To confirm this, we perform the pH test. To perform the pH test, put water in a Pyrex and add only a little soap batter. For a more accurate result, take it from the inside of the batter, not the outside. Stir well and add a little boiling water to help dissolve the soap. Place a pH strip in the water and check the result. The ideal pH of soap is between 8 and 10. Ours has a pH of 8, which means the batter is cooked and the soap is ready. Let it cool completely before moving on to the next step. To store and dilute, we need to make some calculations. We obtained a total of 429 grams of soap batter. We know this because we measured the weight of the empty pan at the beginning, which was 374 grams, and measured the weight of the pan again after the batter was cold, which was 803 grams. So 803 less 374 grams equals 429 grams of soap batter. For this video, we decided to divide the soap batter in half so we could demonstrate how to store and dilute, both for use against garden pests and for homemade laundry detergent. Let's see how we did it. After cooling down, with the help of a spoon and a spatula, we removed roughly half of the soap batter from the pan. After this removal, the pan weighed 632 grams, so 632 grams less 374 grams of the tear equals 258 grams. This was the amount left in the pan to be diluted. 429 grams of the total soap batter less 258 grams equals 171 grams. This was the amount we stored for later dilution. The 258 grams remaining in the pan were diluted to make laundry detergent. The ideal ratio for this purpose is 1 to 1.5, therefore 1 part of soap to 1.5 parts of water. So 258 grams times 1.5 equals 387 grams of water. So weigh 387 grams of water and use a kettle to quickly boil the water. The hot water will help break down and dissolve the thick batter. When boiling, some water is always lost due to evaporation, but for this purpose it doesn't make much difference. Add the boiling water to the pan, use the spatula to slightly break up the batter, distribute it in the water, and let it sit for a few minutes. Use the hand blender until it becomes liquid. At this stage, Essential oils can be added if desired, but we prefer to use neutral detergent. Let it cool completely. Once cool, using a funnel, pour it into a container suitable for use in the laundry. 
the use of this detergent is the same as conventional detergents, meaning the recommended doses should be used according to the hardness of the water. The 171 grams we stored for later use were diluted to spray pests in the garden and orchard. The dilution ratio for spraying varies depending on the type of soap, the pests being targeted, and how severely the plants are affected. To obtain a smooth spray liquid for lightly affected plants, we will use a maximum of 10 liters of water for dilution. The 10 liters make this task easier, as we have a 10 liter pot, or alternatively, two 5 liter water bottles can be used. Many sprayers for home gardens are also 5 liters, so we recommend making dilutions according to these proportions, only changing the amount of soap according to the severity of the pest attack in the garden. Since this soap is difficult to break down, we recommend starting the dilution in the same way as we did for the laundry detergent, that is, by putting boiling water in the pot at a ratio of 1 to 1.5, breaking and dissolving the soap, and then placing the soap in the pot or dividing it into two bottles, filling them with water to the top. This way, we obtain a soap solution. To apply in the vegetable garden and orchard, transfer the solution to a sprayer. The solution should only be used if pests are observed. It should not be used merely as a preventive method. It should be applied directly on soft-bodied insects such as aphids, lice, caterpillars, white flies and moths. It is worth mentioning to be careful not to spray directly on beneficial insects such as ladybugs and bees. The application can be done once or twice a week, early in the morning or late in the day. Apply on stems and leaves, not forgetting the back of the leaves, where there is a higher concentration of pests. It is advisable to avoid application on windy days and during the hottest hours of the day. For all detailed information about this soap, visit this post on our blog. We hope you enjoyed this video and don't forget to share, like and subscribe to our channel for more videos on sustainability, organic farming, natural products and so much more.